A lot of you have been asking how much I made all-time return. Make sure you stick to the end of the video for that information. So just an update on my Robinhood portfolio, currently at $770,000. Past year, up 61%, so very high growth. Buying power of $100. I do have another uh, $100,000 in a high-yield savings account at a yield of 4.25%. Robinhood Gold has 4.5% yield, um, and I do plan to continue using that subscription service. Taking a look at my portfolio, you can see largest position is NVIDIA stock. Uh, this company makes uh, GPUs and data centers, and there's been a lot of hype behind it because of the AI uh, demand. And you can see this makes up 27% of my portfolio, or 211, almost $212,000, up 2,500% on this position with an average cost of $5.21 per share. I don't plan to add any more uh, chip stocks to my portfolio just because I think I'm pretty exposed to it. Next is S&P 500 ETF. This makes up 10.36% portfolio or $80,000. I'm up 2.34% on this position. And I did move a lot of my Vanguard ETF to this ETF instead because I'm uh, selling covered calls to make some extra passive income. Next is Apple, which uh, is known for their uh, iPhone, as well as Mac computers and iPads. And their growing business is in uh, the services space, uh, which includes Apple Music, uh, Apple TV, iCloud. And I think as they continue to get into the AI space with Apple Intelligence, I think uh, people will continue to use their products and services and I think they're also growing in the wearable space with Apple Watch, uh, AirPods. And I think Apple is a good long-term hold and continues to pay out dividends. This makes up 6.75% portfolio or $51,900. I'm up 476% at an average cost of $40 per share. Next is Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. It's a lower expense ratio, but... And when I saw uh, covered call options, uh, there isn't as much liquidity, so I prefer SPY. This makes a 5.4% portfolio or $41,000, up 35% on this position. Next is Amazon, which is big in the e-commerce space as well as uh, Amazon Web Services. So it's one of the hyperscalers in terms of accelerating the AI industry. It makes a 5.13% portfolio or $39,000. Up 80% on this position. Next is Meta Platforms, which is parent company of Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and VR company Oculus. And they are making more uh, augmented reality, mixed reality headsets with their Ray-Ban sunglasses. And they also had uh, an Orion AR glasses that were really impressive. Uh, this makes up 4.75% portfolio or $36,000. Up 213% on this position. Next is Vanguard Growth ETF. This makes up 4.57% portfolio or $35,000. Up 32% on this position. Next is Microsoft. Uh, they're in the enterprise solution space, which includes Microsoft Office, Azure, Cloud Computing, uh, PC, Windows. Um, they are also in gaming with Xbox. Uh, this makes a 4.4% portfolio or $33,800. This makes uh, this is up 296% uh, total return. I don't plan to add any more Microsoft, even though they are very attractive, uh, but I will plan to hold long-term. Next is Vanguard Information Technology ETF. This makes up 3.68% portfolio or $28,400. Up 341% on this position. I am very exposed to the tech industry. You can see the top 10 holdings. I do hold a lot of these stocks individually. Um, so I plan to diversify more by buying more uh, index funds. Next is TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. This actually surged recently after reported earnings. A lot of optimism. This makes up 3.18% portfolio or $24,000. Uh, 142% on this position. 
Next is Mercado Libre. This is uh, big in uh, Latin America with their e-commerce and uh, their payment processing services. Uh, this makes up 2.94% portfolio or $22,000, up 96% on this position. It's a very high growth stock. I think there's a lot of uh, potential upside in the Latin America market. Visa in the payment processing space makes up 2.54% portfolio or $19,547, up 142% on this position. Next is Alphabet Class A shares. This has voting rights. Majority of the revenue is uh, online advertising, similar to Meta. Makes up 1.98% portfolio or $15,000 up 187% on this position. Next is Costco, uh, which is in the warehouse retail space. A lot of their revenue is from membership and the retention of the membership is very high, I think over 90%. This makes up 1.76% portfolio or $13,541, up 230% on this position. Alphabet Class C shares does not have voting rights. This makes up 1.66% portfolio, or $12,776, up 166% on this position. I wish I had consolidated uh, Alphabet Class C shares with Class A shares. That way I can sell some covered calls, make some additional income. United Health in the healthcare space, insurance payer consulting services. This makes up 1.4% of my portfolio, or $10,798 up 228% on this position. CrowdStrike, you can see uh, they took a significant dip after the outage. This is a cybersecurity company, makes up 1.36% portfolio or $10,500, up 118% on this position. Shopify, which is uh, big in the e-com space, makes up 1.26% portfolio or $9,600 down 1.06% on this position. I'm still thinking about whether I want to keep Shopify or sell it just because I think a lot of my portfolio is very volatile and in a dis consumer discretionary space. So I want to uh, diversify more into uh, S&P 500 ETF. Home Depot, which is in the home improvement space, makes up 1.25% portfolio or $9,636, up 126% on this position. Johnson & Johnson is another healthcare company in the consumer space, medical devices, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, this makes up 1.24% portfolio, or $9,500, up 27% on this position. Next is McDonald's, which is in the fast food restaurant chain. Uh, makes up 1.23% portfolio, or $9,400, up 96% on this position. Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company, uh, they have a very big cash position now. It makes up 1.15% portfolio or $8,825, up 145% on this position. Next is Alibaba, which is a big e commerce and cloud computing company in China. It makes up 0.96% portfolio or $7,300, down 40% on this position. I don't plan to sell this uh, company or stock anytime soon just because I want to get some exposure to international market. And I know Chinese stocks are very volatile and risky given their uh, transparency, but I just want to hold this long term um, to get some diversified exposure. Paul Auto Networks, another cybersecurity company, makes a 0.93% portfolio or $7,200, uh, 56% on this position. Fortinet. Another cybersecurity company makes up 0.75% portfolio or $5,800, up 17% on this position. PayPal, a payment processing, payment services company, makes up 0.63% portfolio or $4,889, down 26% on this position. You can see it surged 42% uh, this year, still down from all-time highs. Uh, but I'll just hold them long term. I might sell some just to uh, offset some of my gains. AT and T, they surged this past year, but still down from all time highs. 
This makes up 0.53% of my portfolio or $4,000, down 36% on this position. They are paying a dividend soon. I also might sell some AT&T to offset some of my capitalized gains. Block, parent company is Square, makes up 0.49% portfolio or $3,700, down 53% on this position. Another company I might uh, sell some of to offset the gains I have in my portfolio. Very, uh, haven't, it's pretty far from all time highs, but yeah, might sell some. Twilio, which is in the communication services space, makes a 0.11% portfolio, $867, down 69% on this position. Same thing, very low from all time highs. And I don't see it getting back to that anytime soon. Baozun, which is a Shopify of China. This makes up 0.05% portfolio or $401. Down 90% on this position. So think about Chinese stocks, it's very risky and volatile. Um, I learned not to touch those anytime soon, but I will continue to hold my positions just to remind myself not to get exposure to that. And I did sell my Ethereum uh, cryptocurrency just because I think it's uh, very risky and volatile, and I'd rather have exposure to the U.S. market of uh, largest companies that generate revenue and are profitable long-term that are more sustainable than uh, gambling on uh, cryptocurrency. So I do plan to continue to add to my portfolio, hold my positions long-term just because I believe in the potential upside. And you can see, even though it's a lot of growth this past year, I do think there's still... Uh, my strategy is to hold long term, so at least a five to ten year horizon. And you can see all time highs, or not all time uh, returns, is one hundred eighty four percent. So that's almost five hundred thousand dollars. I started at around you can see uh, two hundred seventy thousand dollars, but right now it's seven hundred seventy thousand dollars. So a yield of five hundred thousand. Don't plan to sell uh, any of the ones I've gained because I have a lot of gains and. Uh, I might sell some of them, but if I do, I might sell some of the, the stocks that I am losing on just to offset the gains. Um, but I will plan to continue adding more SPY or S&P 500 ETF to my portfolio uh, to get exposure to it and sell some covered calls to make some more passive income. That's all for my uh, Robinhood portfolio. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.